Are you stuck trying to choose a cybersecurity career path? Maybe you're overwhelmed by all the different options, you're worried about AI, or you're just worried about picking the wrong thing, like maybe there's not enough jobs in the future. Well, this video is your roadmap. I'm gonna give you a simple plan to help you beat analysis paralysis and end up with the perfect job for you. And I do wanna say for any actual security practitioners who happen to be watching this, who are like actually working in the industry, if you think I say anything wrong or I'm like misleading or anything, absolutely call me out in the comments. I don't think I'm wrong, but I just wanted to say that. Now, most people think you need to have a perfect plan before you get started, and they'll spend months or even years trying to find the perfect certification or degree path. But let me tell you a secret. That's not what I did at all, and I had no idea what I was doing when I first started. And spoiler alert, as long as you have enough execution and consistency, even the most average half-baked plan will end up working. And as somebody who has gone from basically zero to security engineer to security security program manager to owning my own cybersecurity ed tech company and running a cyber range, I'm going to tell you the exact path that I would take today if I was starting from zero and had no idea what area of security I wanted to work in. And real quick, if you want some entertaining positivity, you can follow us on Instagram. I share physique building, diet, health, and general life optimization tips, all while living abroad with my team. And like I said at the beginning, any half-baked average plan will work if you have enough consistency and execution behind it, but we don't want to have like an average plan. So I'm gonna talk about a plan that I think is really good. And if you execute well and consistently on this plan, you're gonna to get to where you need to be sooner rather than later. I'm also not gonna sell you anything in this video so you can put that out of your mind right now. But basically what we're going to do is I'm gonna build this visualization of a roadmap of things that you can do in a certain sequence. And the idea is you do these things until you realize the area that you want to work in and then you can specialize in that area. But even if you can't make up your mind and you can't decide if you follow this roadmap perfectly, it's gonna give you a lot of skills that overlap across a lot of different security domains. So it's gonna be really easy for you to transition once you finally like pick an area that you want to specialize in. And the very first thing I recommend covering is security fundamentals, like the very foundational stuff in security. And in my opinion, the highest quality thing that you can do to get the fundamentals down is just getting Google Cybersecurity Professional Certification. It's just really cheap. Uh, I'm not going to give you like an affiliate link or anything like this. You can just Google it on your own. I have it. A lot of people have it. And it's, it's really good because it, it basically covers almost everything that Security Plus covers and more stuff because it has a lot of SQL and Python in there as well. And I believe you can work with a SIM as well and there's some virtualization stuff that you can do like working in an actual environment a bit. It's just a really good certification and it will give you a lot of context to a lot of different security topics. Um, if you have extra money though, after getting the Google Cybersecurity certification, I do recommend getting uh, CompTIA Security Plus. You'll get a, a discount voucher after completing the Google one. So in the end, like if you get Google and the discount, getting both Security Plus and the Google one will be cheaper than just getting Security Plus on its own, assuming you pass the Google cert the first time and it takes you less than two months. Alternatives to this, if you don't want to spend any money, is just going through Professor Messer's uh, CompTIA Security Plus playlist and just making sure you learn everything. And we also have a Security Plus exam practice question deck as well for free, which I'll put a link for in the description. And just a reminder, everything I'm recommending at this foundational level, it applies to almost all security jobs and like most of IT jobs. So you don't have to worry about studying something that's not in use. So the next level is the transport level or network technologies more specifically. So I generally recommend um, either just getting CompTIA Network Plus or just studying for that material the same way. Like you can study for uh, Network Plus with Professor Messer's content and you don't have to necessarily, you know, get the certification, but it will help your resume a lot if you do. And alternatively to Network Plus, there's uh, CCNA, which is Cisco Certified Network Associate. And CCNA is better than Network Plus in every single metric that you can measure, like the objectives. It's it just covers so much more and it's more hands-on. And after you get Security Plus, you'll know how to actually build a network and set up the routing protocols and you'll actually understand how switching works. It's just really, really good. It's way better than Network Plus, but the only problem with CCNA is it's quite a bit harder than Network Plus is. It's cheaper, but it's quite a bit harder. So. You can either just get Network Plus, but if you're really into networking, you think it's really interesting, go ahead and get CCNA. But if you don't want to spend any money and you just want to learn the networking foundations and fundamentals, you can just go to Professor Messers and just learn the Network Plus curriculum. And we also have a Network Plus exam practice question deck as well for free, which I'll put in the description below. And then the next layer of our roadmap, we're going to cover cloud platforms. So I recommend either just 
going with AWS or Azure. If you want to study with Azure, I just recommend getting the AZ900 certification. It's super cheap. And even if you don't get the actual certification, the whole like curriculum and everything is, is free already uh, on Microsoft Learn. So you can just do that. And then same with AWS Cloud Practitioner. I think that exam, it's either free or really, really cheap. So either one of those, you can basically like flip a coin if you don't know how to decide. Because once you learn one of them, it's going to be really easy to learn the equivalents um, on the other side, if that makes sense. And pretty much, I want to say every business, but pretty much like every business is leveraging the cloud platform in one way or another. Like my business certainly does. We, our whole like cyber range is delivered on Azure and almost everywhere I worked has worked with some kind of cloud platform in one way or another. So just get one of these. Um, if you don't want to spend money, just study the curriculum and then you can do some kind of labs, put them on your resume and your portfolio or something like this. But it's really important to get that cloud exposure and some experience under your belt because pretty much everywhere uses it. And then once you have the cloud basics down, you can kind of start specializing. So I kind of defined two different areas where you can specialize in the roadmap. One is a blue team side and one is a red team side. Um, there's more to cybersecurity than this, but this is, again, this is just a nice roadmap that you can follow. Like if you, if you don't know what you want to do, if you follow this, you're not going to go wrong. So I'll kind of talk about it a bit. There's two sides, um, red team and blue team. Red team is like offensive security, like ethical hacking, penetration testing, that type of stuff. And then the blue team path is more traditional cybersecurity defense type things and I do want to say there's like probably in terms of job split there's probably like 90 percent plus defensive jobs and there's way less offensive jobs but even if you study offensive security like you go down that whole offensive security path you're going to be pretty good at defending because when you study offensive security it just makes you a better defender and if you study defensive security it can potentially make you a, a better offensive security practitioner but um, I found that studying offsec makes you, it gives you a lot of context as to why certain defensive like tactics or whatever, why certain defensive practices are really, really important. So if you don't know what to do, um, you can either, I'll like go in depth down each one of these paths, but you can either at this point after studying cloud, you can either go all the way down the defensive path. You can go all the way down the offensive path, which is the red team path, or you can kind of alternate between paths if you just don't know what you want still. And then you might decide at some point that you think offsec is really, really interesting. So you might go down that way, but I'll kind of explain both of these paths uh, right now. So the first step in the defensive path, um, I might recommend studying CompTIA SISA plus that's cybersecurity analyst plus from CompTIA. This basically basically covers security operations stuff um, like incident response, vulnerability management, and there's some kind of uh, log log analysis in there as well. It's just basically the stuff that happens in a security operations center. We actually have a practice question deck for this as well. It's free. And so you can either get CompTIA size a plus and pay for it. I think it's like 400 bucks or something like this, or you can just study Professor Messer's stuff for free and the practice question deck for free as well. And this, this is absolutely better than doing nothing. Next level down the blue team path, I might recommend looking at blue team level one. It's like a hands-on cybersecurity program and you can learn a lot of more security operations stuff, but it's more hands-on. And then the next level, level three would be the cyber range. It's kind of similar to level two, but it's like an open work environment with realistic security tools and like a whole security tech stack that you can use and get hands-on experience with as well as an internship thing, as well as an internship component so you can put actual experience on your resume. And then looking at the red team path, the very first level on that is CompTIA Pentest Plus. It just teaches you the basics of offensive security and pen testing, covering those pen test methodology. You can get this from CompTIA. I believe it costs again, like around $400 or something like this. But if you just want to study it for free, I'm sure there's a lot of free study material online, as well as like our free pen test plus practice question deck, which I'll put a link for in the description. And then the next level up, level two for the red team application, for the red team technical application, I would look into practical network penetration tester or PNPT from TCM security, or you could look into hack the box uh, PTS. This is a certification from hack the box. Both of these are really hands-on and practical and they're, they're just really, really useful. And then the level three, this is considered like the industry standard for if you want to get into penetration testing and offensive security, you could look into OSCP. And this is like, I would say this is quite difficult. I actually studied for this when I was trying to get into security and I didn't end up getting the certification because it was a lot and it takes a lot of time. But I went through a lot of the OSCP labs, that's offensive security. I think it's offensive security certified practitioner. But I went through a lot of the labs and it gave me a lot to talk about when I actually got to interviews. And my first cybersecurity job, I talked about 
throughout my OSTP study like quite a bit, and I ended up getting hired for that one. So this is like the industry standard for offensive security. And then finally, I just want to talk about CISSP a bit. Um, that's Certified Information Systems Security Professional, I think. If you happen to go down like either one of these paths all the way or both of them, I do recommend just studying for and getting CISSP if you're serious about working in corporate security or in defense. Um, it's just a really useful certification and it made a lot of difference um, in terms of getting interviews for me when I finally got CISSP. And there's an experience requirement behind it. Like you need to have, um, if you have a certification like Security Plus or something, you just need four years experience in two of the eight domains, which is easier to do than you think, because some of the domains are like asset security and um, asset management. And you can always like fudge your like application a bit to show you how you work in those domains in your jobs. And you need a sponsor for CSSP, but um, luckily I have CSSP so I can I can endorse anyone who's watching this. So read between the lines. Um, it's easier to get CSSP than you think. It's just a pain in the ass to study for, but once you get it, it's makes a big difference right in terms of like getting interviews it's really really good and i would just recommend it if you happen to make your way far enough down either one of these paths and i do want to say if you don't have a degree yet i recommend just getting the uh, cybersecurity and information assurance bachelor's degree from wgu because that degree will it'll basically like take you down this roadmap that i've designed out and i didn't do this on purpose but there's a lot of certifications in that degree and then you'll just get a degree at the end and the degree is legit because that that program gave wgu the like center of academic excellence designation which is from the nsa so it basically means like that degree program is in line with defense standards and like industry standards and the nsa is like bless the program um if you want to look at it that way so that's an alternative to just like studying these individually on your own you can just get that degree and i'll put a link in the description as well for like a pathway that will help you get the degree faster than you would normally like it's possible to get that whole degree in in less than a year and i, I know of a couple of people who have gotten it in six months it's like really really fast and it's kind of difficult to do but it is possible and it is one option and i just want to talk a bit about what my pathway looked like starting from the very very beginning in terms of this roadmap so uh, as far as fundamentals go I, I ended up getting a lot of comptia certifications because i didn't actually like know what i was doing so i ended up getting like a plus network plus security plus uh project plus and server plus as well and i studied for linux plus but i, I didn't take it so that, that was my fundamentals level and as far as transport goes um i did have network plus like i said and but i actually got ccna as well and i studied for ccnp route which is kind of the next level up from ccna and then for cloud platforms i, I didn't actually get any cloud certifications but I ended up building a lot of projects inside Azure and those projects led me to be being able to work at Microsoft because I, I got an interview at Microsoft as a contractor, not like a full time, but um, I got an interview and I talked about how I use their cloud platform to like build my projects and they were pretty impressed by that. And then I ended up getting hired at Microsoft based on that. And then I got a lot more cloud experience um, while I was actually working at Microsoft. And I, I ended up um, at that point, I ended up just like skipping all this other stuff like this level one through level three on, on both sides. I didn't know any better. So I just started studying for uh, OSCP. Oh, I actually got CISSP actually first before I studied for OSCP. So I, I got CISSP and then I started studying for OSCP because like I didn't, I didn't know what to do, right? So I just wanted to be like a hacker, I guess. So I was studying for that. And then because I had CISSP and like a bunch of these other certs and like projects, I got an interview as a senior information security um, engineer, no, senior information security analyst. And then inside of that interview, I talked about OSCP a lot. And I talked about getting root in, um, like, you know, cracking, like hacking into like the OSCP lab. And I talked about it and I, framed it in a way that let the interviewer know that I really understand how to defend and how defensive security works and, and everything like that. And I just ended up getting hired. Like my, ironically, my first cybersecurity job had a senior title in it because I, I kind of worked in IT already, but I did all of this stuff already and I had a lot of projects and I just ended up getting hired as a senior information security analyst um, at that point. And I never got OSCP, I just studied for it, but I did get all those other certs that I talked about. And the reason why I think this roadmap is so good is because it just gives you a super foundation and it will kind of diversify your skill set. So when you happen to get that interview inadvertently working with some technology that you, you're not really familiar with or you haven't worked there yet or something, you have a lot of foundation and a lot of context for other things. So it becomes really, really easy to ramp up on that job, like whatever it happens to be. Or say you do all the foundational stuff and you, you get like halfway down the, the blue team side, like you finish 
uh, blue team level one. And then at that point you decide like, okay, like I know that I want to work in IAM or like I know that I want to work in offensive security. Regardless of what it is, you have like a really strong foundation already because you're following this roadmap. So it just works out really well, especially for those people who don't actually know which area they want to work in. Like you basically can't go wrong with this. And if you decide to do it and you execute hard enough, you really can't go wrong with it because even a crap plan will end up working if you have enough execution and consistency behind it. And I do want to say it's really important. Um, if you do this thing perfectly and you get all the certifications, if you don't know how to package it correctly, like on your resume, um, you won't get an interview. And then when you get to the interview, if you can't convey the stuff correctly, you won't get the job right. So it's really important to learn how to package this stuff. So I'm going to put some links in the description. It's all free stuff. Like, don't worry. Um, we have this community and there's like a lot of modules and then sample resumes and stuff. So I'll put some links for like how to construct your resume with a resume template. And I'll put some thing for like um, how to prepare for your interview and then how to create a, a portfolio because all that stuff is like really really important and it's it's equally as important as the actual knowledge because if you can't convey it like what's the point of like going through the effort to learn all of this stuff so again i just want to say if you you're struck with analysis paralysis and you don't know what to do just like stop thinking and just follow this roadmap and if you execute consistently like you don't give up and you just do your best and and be consistent eventually you're going to land on something that you like or you'll, you'll get a job eventually it's a mathematical certainty because everyone like gives up at some point like people will give up like sooner rather than later. You just have to be smart and then pivot if you need to and keep studying and be consistent and improving over time. And you you will get a job and you will break into cybersecurity eventually. It's a it's mathematics. It's just a function of time and like effort over time is basically what it is. So yeah, follow the roadmap and don't give up. So if you're interested in making like a lot, a lot of money in cybersecurity, I made another video about it. Um, it's kind of more for fun. It's a serious video and it has like real stuff in it and it, it will work if you do it, but it's really difficult. Um, basically the video is like, if I had to start over from scratch to making at least 500K per year in cybersecurity, like this is the stuff I would do. And I, I talk about um, what I do in that video and how much money I make and kind of my, my roadmap and progression to making a high, like relatively high six figure sum. It's kind of like a super advanced version of this video. It's, it's pretty fun and it will like at least give you some kind of context about like the person you need to become and like the stuff you need to be thinking about ahead of time if you want to make like a lot, a lot of money. So definitely check that one out. And again, follow us on Instagram if you want some entertaining positivity. It's a, a nice mix of cybersecurity and fitness and health and just general life optimization. And it's mostly abroad content like in Japan and Thailand. And a lot of it is going to be with my team who helps us, uh, who helps me create these videos and help support our platform and group. So definitely check that out and we'll see you in the next video.